Welcome to The Woods. The Woods combines all of your favorite online platforms into one application. The Woods features search function, friends list, follow function, and hosting privileges that give you the power over your meeting. No more tabs. No need to go anywhere else. So make your next meeting the best meeting you can have. Meet in the woods. Meet me 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 in the woods. Come on. Side effects of using the woods may include high volumes of entertainment, connection, and communication. Family squabbles and friendship disintegration is not condoned by the woods. Using the follow function is intended to help friends connect and should be avoided by insulted romantic leads attempting to track their exes. The woods does not acknowledge rumors of fairy infestation nor does it condone supernatural finagling in human affairs. With online and mobile banking and over 80,000 surcharge-free ATMs across the U.S. and around the world, Clearview is everywhere you are. Clearview, clearly everywhere. You expect more from Clearview, and that's what you'll get. Happy to be Theseus, our renowned duke. Thanks, good Aegeus. What's the news with thee? A full vexation come I with complaint against my child, my daughter, Hermia. This man hath my consent to marry her. This man hath bewitched the bosom of my child. What say you, Hermia? Be advised, fair mates. You, your father, should be as a god, one who composed your beauties, yea, and to whom you are but as a form in wax. By him imprinted and within his power to keep the form or to disfigure it. Demetrius is a worthy gentleman. So is Lysander. I would my father looked but with my eyes. Or rather, your eyes should with his judgment look. I do entreat your grace to pardon me, but I beseech your grace that I may know the worst that may befall me if I refuse to wed Demetrius. Either to die the death or to abjure forever the society of man. Therefore, fair Hermia, question your desires, think of your youth, examine well your blood, whether if you follow not your father's will, whether you can endure the livery of a nun. So will I grow, so live, so die, my lord. Take time to pause, and by the next new moon, Upon that day, either prepare to die or to wed Demetrius, as your father would, or on Diana's altar to protest for I austerity and single life. Relent, sweet Hermia. How oh, now, my love? Why is your cheek so pale? How chance the roses there do fade so fast? like for want of rain, which I could well team them from the tempest of my eyes. Ay me, for aught that I could ever read, could ever hear by tale or history, the course of true love never did run smooth. But either it was different in blood- Oh, hell to choose love by another's eye. I have a widow aunt. A dowager of great revenue, and she hath no child. From Athens is her house remote seven leagues, and she respects me as her only son. There, gentle Hermia, may I marry thee. <laughs> My good Lysander, oh, I swear to thee by Cupid's strongest bow, but by all the vows that men have ever broke, the number women ever spoke, tomorrow truly will I meet with thee. He promised, love. Look, here comes oh, Helena. Godspeed, fair Helena, wither away. Call you me fair, that fair again unsay. Demetrius loves your fair. Oh, happy fair, 
Your eyes are lodestars, and your tongue sweet air, more tunable than lark to shepherd's ear. Uh, I frown upon him, yet he loves me still. Take comfort. He no more shall see my face. Lysander and myself will fly this place. Oh, before the time I did Lysander see, seemed Athens as a paradise to me. Oh, then what graces in my love do dwell, that he hath turned a heaven unto a hell. <laughs> Helen, to you our minds we will unfold. Through Athens' gates have we devised to steal. And in the wood, where often you and I upon faint primrose beds were wont to lie, emptying our bosoms of their counsel sweet, there my Lysander and myself shall meet. Farewell, sweet playfellow. Pray thou for us, and good luck grant thee thy Demetrius. Keep word, Lysander. We must starve our sight from lover's food till tomorrow deep midnight. <laughs> I will, my Hermia. Helena, adieu. As you on him, Demetrius dote on you. How happy some or other some can be. Through Athens, I am thought as fair as she, but what of that? Demetrius thinks not so. He will not know what all but he do know. And as he errs, doting on Hermia's eyes, so I, admiring of his qualities, Things base and vile, holding no quantity, love can transpose to form and dignity. Love looks not with the eyes, but with the mind. And therefore is winged Cupid painted blind. For ere Demetrius looked on Hermia's eyes, he hailed down oaths that he was only mine. And when this hail some heat from Hermia felt, so he dissolved, and showers of oaths did melt. I will go tell him of fair Hermia's flight. Then to the wood will he tomorrow night pursue her. And for this intelligence, if I have thanks, it is a dear expense. But herein mean I to enrich my pain, to have his sight thither and back again. Is all our company here? You are best to call them generally, man by man, according to the script. Here is the scroll of every man's name, which is thought fit through all Athens to play in our interlude before the Duke and Duchess on his wedding day at night. First, good Peter Quinn, say what the play treats on, then read the names of the actors and so grow to a point. Mary, our play is the most lamentable comedy and most cruel death of Pyramus and Thisbe. A very good piece of work, I assure you. And Mary. Now, good Peter Quince, call forth your actors by the scroll. Answer as I call you. <clears throat> Nick Bottom, the weaver. <clears throat> Ready? Uh, name what part I am for, and proceed. You, Nick Bottom, are set down for Pyramus. What is Pyramus? A lover or a tyrant? A lover that kills himself most gallant for love. That will call for some tears in the true performing of it. If I do it, let the audience look to their eyes. I will move storms. I will kindle in some re measure to the rest. Yet my chief humor is for a tyrant. I could play Hercules rarely or a part to tear a cat in. The raging rocks and shivering shocks shall break the locks of prison gates and Phoebus' car 
shall shine from and make and mar the foolish fates. This was lofty. Now name the rest of the players. This Hercules vein, a tyrant's vein. A lover is more condoling. <clears throat> Francis Flute, the bellows mender. Here, Peter Quince. Flute, you must take Thisbe on you. What is Thisbe? A wandering knight? It is the lady that Pyramus must love. Oh, nay, faith. And Let I may hide my face. Let me play the lady, too. I will speak in a monstrous little voice. <clears throat> Fizz me! Fizz me! Ah, Pyramus! Thy lover dear, thy Fizz be dear, and thy lady dear. No, no, you must play Pyramus. And flute you, Thisbe. Well, proceed. Robin Starveling, you must play Thisbe's mother. Tom Sma Snout, you, Pyramus's father. Myself, Thisbe's father. Snug the joiner, you the lion's part. And I hope here is a play fitted. Have you the lion's part written? If you do, I pray you give it me, for I am slow of study. You may do it extemporary, for it is nothing but roaring. Let me play the lion, too. I will roar that it will do any man's heart good to hear me. I will roar that I will make the duke say, let him roar again. Let him roar and again! And you should do it too terribly. You would fright the duchess and the ladies. Then they would shriek, and that were enough to hang us all. That, that would, would hang us. That would hang us every mother's son. Every, every mother's, mother's son. son. I grant you, friends, that if you should fright the ladies out of their wits, they would have no more discretion but to hang us. But I will aggravate my voice so that I will roar you as gently as any sucking dove. I will roar you. You can play no part but Pyramus. For Pyramus, is a sweet-faced man, a proper man, as one you shall see on a summer's day. Hmm? A most lovely, gentleman-like man. Therefore, you must needs play Pyramus. Well, I will undertake it. A masters, here are your parts. And I am to entreat you request you and desire you to con them by tomorrow night and meet me in the wood, there we, we will rehearse. In the meantime, I will draw a bill of property such as our play wants. I pray you, fail me not. We will meet and there we may rehearse most obscenely and courageously. Take pains, be perfect, adieu. How now, spirit? Whither wander you? Over hill, over dale, through bush, through briar, over park, over pale, through flood, through fire. I do wander everywhere, swifter than the... Ill met by moonlight, proud Titania. What, jealous Oberon? I have forsworn your bed and company. Terry. Rash, wanton, am I not thy lord? Then I must be thy lady, but I know these are the mere forgeries of jealousy. And never since middle summer spring met we on hill and dale, forest, or mead to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But with thy bras thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore, the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are the parents and the original. Do you amend it then? It lies in you. 
Why should Titania cross her Oberon? If you will patiently dance in our round and see our moonlight rebels go with us. If not, shun me and I will spare your haunts. Well, go thy way. Thou shalt not from this grove till I have tormented thee for this injury. Gentle Puck, come hither. Thou rememberest that very time I saw, but thou couldst not. Flying between the cold moon and earth, Cupid all armed. A certain aim he took at a fair bestial thrown it in the west, and loosed his love shaft smartly from his bow as if to pierce a hundred thousand hearts. Yet marked I where the bolt of Cupid fell. It fell upon a little western flower, once milk white, now purple with love's wound. And maidens call it love in idleness. Fetch me that flower, that herb I showed thee once, the juice of which on sleeping eyelids laid will make or man or woman madly doped on the next live creature that it sees. Fetch me this herb, and be thou here again, ere the leviathan can swim a league. I'll put a girdle round about the earth in 40 minutes. Having once this juice, I'll watch Titania while she is asleep, and drop the liquor of it in her eye. The next thing that she waking looks upon, she will pursue with the soul of love. But, soft, who comes here? I am invisible, and will overhear their conference. Oh, I, I, I love thee not, therefore pursue me not. Where is Lysander and, and fair Hermia? The one I'll slay in, well, and the other slayeth me. Th Thou toldest me they were stolen unto this wood, and here I am, and woed within this wood because I cannot meet my Hermia. You draw me, you hard-hearted adamant, but yet you draw not iron, for my heart is true as steel. Leave you your power to draw, and I will have no power to follow you. Do, do I entice you? Do, do I speak you fair? Or rather, do I not, in plainest truth, tell you I do not, nor I cannot love you? And in for that do I love you the more. Oh! Tempt not too much the hatred of my spirit. For I am sick when I do look upon thee. And I am sick when I look not on you. Oh, I, I will not stay thy questions. Let me go, or if thou follow me, do not believe, but I shall do thee mischief upon in this wood. I in the field, in the town, in the temple, you do me mischief. Oh. I, Demetrius, your wrongs do set a scandal on my sex. We cannot fight for love as men may do. We should be wooed and we're not made to woo. Oh. I'll follow thee and make a heaven of hell to die upon the hand I love so well. Fare and well, sweet nymph. Ere he leave this grove, thou shalt fly him and he shall seek thy love. Yes. Hath thou the flower? Welcome, wanderer. Aye, there it is. I pray thou give it me. There Titania sleeps some time of the night. With the juice of this, I'll streak her eyes and fill her with hateful fantasies. Take thou some of it. And seeking through this grove, a sweet Athenian lady is in love with a disdainful youth. Anoint his eyes, but do it when the next thing he espies may be the lady. You'll know the man by the Athenian garment he has on. But espouse it with some care that he may prove more fond on her than she upon her love. And 
See that thou meet me here again ere the first cock crow. Fear not, my lord. Your servant shall do so. Come now, a round over the fairy song. Sing me now sleep. Then to your offices and let me rest. Never harm, never harm, nor spell, nor, nor charm. Spell, nor charm. Come, our lovely lady Come nine. Come, our lovely lady nine. So, good night with lullaby. So, good night with lullaby. Hence away. Now all is well. One aloof stand sentinel. <laughs> what thou seest, when thou doth wake, do it for thy true love take. Love and languish for his sake. In thy eye what shall appear when thou wakest? It is thy dear. Wake when some vile thing is near. Fair love, you faint with wandering in the wood. <laughs> we'll rest us, Hermia, if you think it good, and tarry for the comfort of the day. Be it so, Lysander, find you out a bed, for I upon this bank will rest my head. Night and silence, who is here? Weeds of Athens he doth wear. This is he, my master said, despised the Athenian maid. And here the maiden sleeping sound. Churl, upon thy eyes I throw all the power this charm doth owe. When thou wakest, let love forbid sleep his seat on thy eyelid. So, awake when I am gone, for I must now to Oberon. Stay, though thou kill me, sweet Demetrius. I charge thee hence, and do not haunt me thus. Oh, I am out of breath in this fond chase. The more my prayer, the lesser is my grace. Happy is Hermia, wheresoe'er she lies, for she hath blessed and attractive eyes. How came her eyes so bright? Not with salt tears. If so, my eyes are oftener washed than hers. But who is here? Lysander! Lysander! If you live, good sir, awake! <laughs> and run through fire I will for thy sweet sake. Transparent Helena, nature shows art that through thy bosom makes me see thy heart. Where is Demetrius? Oh, how fit a word is that vile name to perish on my sword. What, though he love your Hermia? Lord, what though? Yet Hermia still loves you, then be content. <laughs> content with Hermia? No, I do repent the tedious minutes I with her have spent. Not Hermia, but Helena, I love. Wherefore was I to this keen mockery born? When at your hands did I deserve this scorn? Good troth you do me wrong, good sooth you do, in such disdainful manner me to woo. Fare you well. Perforce, I must confess, I thought you lord of more true gentleness. Oh, that a lady of one man refused should of another therefore be abused. I... She sees not Hermia. Hermia, sleep thou there, and never mayst thou come Lysander near. <sighs> me for pity oh, or what a dream was here lysander look how i do quake with fear <laughs> lysander what R removed uh, lysander lord what out of out of hearing gone no sound no word no well then I well perceive you all not nigh. E either death or you I'll find immediately. Are we all met? Peter Quince. What sayest thou, Bully Bottom? There are things in this comedy of Pyramus and Thisbe that will never please. 
first Pyramus must draw a sword to kill himself, which the ladies cannot abide. How answer you that? Fire Lakin, a parlous fear. I believe we must leave the killing out when all is done. Not a whit. I have a device that will make all well. Write me a prologue, and let the prologue seem to say we will do no harm with our swords, and that Pyramus is not killed indeed. And for the more better assurance, tell them that I, Pyramus, am not Pyramus, but Bottom the Weaver. This will put them out of fear. Well, we will have such a prologue, and it shall be written in eight and six. No! Make it two more. Let it be written in eight and eight. Uh, will not the ladies be afeard of the lion? I fear it, I promise you. Masters, you ought to consider with yourselves to bring in God shield us. A lion among ladies is a most dreadful thing. For there is not a more fearful wild fowl than your lion living, and we ought to look to it. Therefore, another prologue must say he is not a lion. Nay, you must name his name, and half his face must be seen through the lion's neck. And he himself must say to some defect, ladies or fair ladies, I would wish you or I would request you or I would entreat you not to fear, not to tremble, my life for yours. If you think I come hither as a lion, it were pity of my life. No, I am no such thing. I am a man, as other men are. And there, indeed, let him say his name and tell them plainly he is snug the joiner. Well, it shall be so. But there is two things. That is, to bring moonlight into a chamber, for you know... Pyramus and Thisbe meet by moonlight. Doth the moon shine that night we play our play? A calendar. A calendar. Look in the almanac. Find out moonshine. Find out moonshine. Yes, it doth shine that night. Why, then may you leave a casement in the great chamber window open, and may the moon shine in on the casement. Aye, or else one must come in with a bush of thorn, and a lanthorn. Hmm? And, and he says he comes to disfigure or, or to present the person of moonshine. Then there is another thing. We must have a wall in the great chamber. For Pyramus and Thisbe, the story says, did talk through a chink in the wall. You can never bring in a wall. What say you, Bottom? Some man or other must present wall. And let him have some plaster or some loam or some rough cast about him to signify wall. And let him hold his fingers thus, and through the cranny can Pyramus and Thisbe whisper. If that may be, then all is well. Come, sit down every mother's son and rehearse your parts. Pyramus, you begin. And when you have spoken your speech, Enter into that break, and every one of you according to his cue. What hempen homespuns have we swaggering here so near the cradle of the fairy queen? What? A play toward? I'll be an auditor, an actor too, perhaps, if I see cause. Speak, Pyramus. Uh, Thisbe, you stand forth. Thisbe! The flowers of odious savor sweet. Odors. Odors. Odors savors sweet. So hath thy breath, dearest Thisbe. But hark, a voice. Stay thou but here a while, and by and by I will appear to thee. A stranger Pyramus than ever played here. Must I speak now? Aye, Mary, must you? You must understand that he goes to see about a noise that he heard, and he comes again. 
most radiant pyramus, most lily white of hue of color, like the red rose on triumphant briar, most brisky juvenile and eke most lovely. Jew as truest as truest horse that yet would never tire. I'll meet the pyramus at Nini's tomb as true as truest horse yet. Ninus's tomb, man. You must not speak that yet. That you answer to pyramus. You speak all your part at once, cues and all. Pyramus, enter. Your cue is past. It is never tire. Oh, as true as truest horse that yet would never tire. If I were fair, Thisbe, I were only thine. Oh, bottom, thou art changed. What do I see on thee? What do you see? Bless thee, bottom. Bless thee, thou art translated. I see their knavery. This is to make an ass of me, to fright me, if they could. But I will not stir from this place, do what they can. I will sing that they shall hear I am not afraid. The ossal cock so black of hue with orange and tawny bill, the thrustle with his note so true, the wren with little quill. Oh, what an angel wakes me from my flowery bed. The finch, the sparrow, and the lark, the plain song cuckoo gray. I pray thee, gentle mortal, sing again. Mine ear is much enamored of thy note. So is mine eye enthralled to thy shape, and thy fair virtue's force perforce doth lose me. On the first view to say, to swear, I love thee. <laughs> <laughs> Mistress, I, methinks you have little reason for that. And yet, to say the truth, love and reason keep little company together nowadays. The more pity that more honest neighbors don't make them more friends. Nay, <laughs> I can clink on occasion. <laughs> <laughs> thou art as wise as thou art beautiful. <laughs> Not so, neither. But if I had wit enough to get out of this wood, I'd have enough to serve mine own turn. Out of this wood, do not desire to go. Thou shalt remain here, whether thou wilt or no. I am a spirit of no common rate. The summer still doth tend upon my state, and I do love thee. Therefore, go with me, and I'll give thee fairies to attend on thee, and they shall fetch thee jewels from the deep, and sing while thou art Pressed on flowers doth sleep, and I will purge thy mortal grossness so that thou shalt like an airy spirit go. Peace blossom, cobweb, moth. Ready. And I. And I. Be kind and courteous to this gentleman. Hop in his walks and gamble in his eyes. Feed him with apricots and dewberries. <laughs> Nod to him, elves, and do him courtesies. Hail, mortal. Hail. Hail. I cry your worship's mercy, heartily. I beseech your worship's name. Cobweb. I shall desire more acquaintance of you, good master Cobweb. If I cut my finger, I shall make bold with you. Your name, honest gentleman. Peas Blossom. I pray you, commend me to Mistress Squash, your mother, and Master Peace God, your father. Good master Peace Blossom. I shall, I shall desire of you more good acquaintance, too. <laughs> Come wait upon him. Lead him to my bower. The moon, methinks, looks with a watery eye. And when she weeps, weeps every little flower, lamenting some enforced chastity. Tie up my love's tongue and bring him silently. I wonder if Titania be awaked, then what it was that next came in her eye which she must dote on on extremity. Here comes my messenger. How now, mad spirit? What night rule about this haunted grove? <laughs> my mistress with a monster is in love. Near to her close and consecrated bower, while she was in her dull and sleeping hour, 
a crew of patches. Rude mechanicals that work for bread upon Athenian stalls were met together to rehearse a play. The shallowest thick skin of that barren sort, who Pyramus presented in their sport, forsook his scene and entered in a break, when I did him at this advantage take. A nun, his thisbe must be answered, and forth my mimic comes. When they him spy at his sight, away his fellows fly. I led them on in this distracted fear, and left sweet Pyramus translated there. When in that moment, so it came to pass, Titania waked and straightway loved an ass. <laughs> <laughs> this falls out better than I could devise. But hast thou yet latched the Athenian's eyes with the love juice as I did bid thee do? I took him sleeping, that is finished too. And the Athenian woman by his side, that when he waked, of force she must be I. Stand aside. This is the same Athenian. Yes. This is the woman, but not this oh, the man. Why rebuke you him that loves you so? Lay breath so bitter on your bitter foe. Uh, now I but chide, but I should use thee worse. For thou, I fear, hast given me cause to curse. If thou hast slain Lysander in his sleep, being o'er shoes and blood, plunge in the deep and kill me too. I'd rather give his carcass to my hounds. Oh, out, dog! Out, cur! Thou drivest me past the bounds of maiden's patience. Hast thou slain him, though? Oh, God. You, you spend your passion on a misprized mood. I am not guilty of Lysander's blood, nor is he dead, for aught I can tell. I pray thee, then, tell me that he is well. And if I could, what should I get there for? Oh, privilege never to see me more. Ooh. There, there's no chasing her in this fierce vein. Here, there, for a while, I will remain. What hast thou done? Thou hast mistaken quite and laid the love juice on some true love sight. From thy misprision must perforce ensue some true love's turn. Not a false turn true. Then fate overrules that one man holding truth, a million fail, confounding oath on oath. About the wood. Go swifter than the wind, and Helena of Athens, look thou find. She is all fancy sick and pale of cheer, with sighs of love that cost the fresh blood dear. By some illusion, see thou find her here. I'll enchant his eye against she do appear. I go, I go, swifter than the arrow from the Tartar's bow. Flower of the purple dye, hit with Cupid's archer re. Sink in apple of his eye, when his love he doth espy, make her shine as gloriously as the Venus of the sky. When thou wakest, if she be by, beg of her for remedy. Captain of our fairy band, Helena is here at hand, and the youth mistook by me, pleading for a lover's fee. Shall we their fond pageant see? <laughs> oh Lord, what fools these mortals be! Stand aside. The noise they make may cause Demetrius to awake. Well, two at once were one. That must needs be sport alone. And those things do best please me that befall preposterously. Why should you think that I should woo in scorn? Scorn and derision never come in tears. Look, when I vow, I weep. And vows so born in their nativity all truth appears. How can these things in me seem scorn to you, bearing the badge of faith that proves them true? You do advance your cunning more and more when truth kills truth. Oh, 
Deathless holy fray, these vows are Hermia's. Will you give her or Weigh oath with oath, and you will nothing weigh. Your vows to her and me put in two scales will even weigh, and both as light as tails. I had no judgment when to her I swore. Nor none in my mind, now you give her or. Demetrius loves her, and he loves not you. Oh, Helena, goddess, nymph, perfect, divine. To what, my love, shall I compare thine eyne? Uh, crystal is muddy. Oh, how ripe and show thy lips, those kissing cherries tempting grow. Oh, spite! Oh, hell, I see you all are bent to set against me for your merriment. If you were civil and knew courtesy, you would not do me thus much injury. Can you not hate me? As I know you do, but you must join in souls to mock me too. You both are rivals and love Hermia, and now both rivals to mock Helena. You are unkind, Demetrius. Be not so, for you love Hermia. This you know, I know. And here, with all good will, with all my heart, in Hermia's love, I yield you up my part. And yours of Helena to me bequeath whom I do love and will do till my death. Never did mockers waste more idle breath. Lysander, <clears throat> keep thy Hermia. I will none. If e'er I loved her, all that love is gone. My heart to her but is guest why sojourned, and now to Helen it is home returned, there to remain. Helen, it is not so. Disparage not the faith thou dost not know, <laughs> lest to thy peril thou abide it dear. Oh, look where thy love comes, yonder is thy dear. Dark night that from the eye his function takes, the ear more quick of apprehension makes, wherein it doth impair the seeing sense, it pays the hearing double recompense. But why unkindly didst thou leave me so? Why should he stay whom love doth press to go? What love could press Lysander from my side? Lysander's love that would not let him bide. Fair Helena, who more engilds the night than all you fiery O's and eyes of light. You speak not as you think, it cannot be. Lo, oh, she is one of this confederacy. Now I perceive they have conjoined all three to fashion this false sport in spite of me. Injurious, Hermia, most ungrateful maid, have you conspired? Have you with these contrived to bait me with this foul derision? Is all the counsel that we two have shared, the sisters' vows, the hours that we have spent when we have chid the hasty-footed time for parting us? Oh, is all forgot! All school days friendship, childhood innocence. We, Hermia, like Two artificial gods have with our needles created both one flower, both on one simpler sitting, on one cushion, both warbling of one song, both in one key, as if our hands, our sides, voices, and minds had been incorporate. So we grew together like to a double cherry, seeming parted, but yet a union in partition. And will you rent our ancient love asunder to join with men in scorning your poor friend? Tis not friendly, tis not maidenly, our sex as well as I may chide you for it, though I alone do feel the injury. I am amazed at your passionate words. I scorn you not. It seems that you scorn me. Have you not set Lysander S. in scorn to follow me and praise my eyes and face? And made your other love, Demetrius, to call, who e'en but now did spurn me with his foot, to call me goddess, nymph, divine, and rare, precious, celestial. Wherefore speaks he this to her he hates? And wherefore doth Lysander deny your love so rich within his soul and tender me? forsooth, affection, but by your setting on, by your consent. I understand not what you mean by this. I do 
persevere, counterfeit sad looks, wink at each other, hold the sweet jest up. This sport, well carried, shall be chronicled. If you had any manners, grace, or pity, you would not make me such an argument, but fare you well. Tis partly my own fault, which death or absence soon shall remedy. Stay, gentle Helena. Hear my excuse. My love, my life, my soul, fair Helena. Oh, Sweet, do not scorn her so. If she cannot entreat, I can compel. Oh, thou canst compel no more than she entreat. Thy threats have no more strength than her weak prayers. Helen, I love thee. By my life, I do. I swear by that which I will lose for thee to prove him false that says I love thee not. I say I love thee more than he can do. If thou say so, withdraw and prove it too. Quick, come. Lysander, where to tends all this? Why are you grown so rude? What change is this, sweet love? Thy love? Out, tawny tartar, out loathed medicine, aided potion, hence. Do you not jest? Yes, so, and so did you. Demetrius, I will keep my word with you. <laughs> I would I had your bond, for I perceive a weak bond holds you. I'll not trust your word. What? Should I, should I hurt her, strike her, kill her dead? Although I hate her, I'll not harm her so. What can you do me greater harm than hate? Hate me? Wherefore, me, what news is this? My love. Am I not Hermia? Are you not Lysander? I, I am as fair now as I was erewhile. Since night you loved me, yet since night you left me. Why then you, you left me? Oh, gods forbid. In, in earnest, shall I say? I, by my life, and never did desire to see thee more. Therefore, be out of hope, of question, of doubt, be certain, nothing truer. Tis no jest that I do hate thee and love Helena. Me. You, you juggler, you canker blossom, you thief of love, what have you come by night and stolen my love's heart from him? Mine, you faith. Have you no modesty, no maiden oh. shame, no touch of bashfulness? What? Will you tear impatient answers from my gentle tongue? Fie, fie, you counterfeit, you puppet, you. Puppet? Oh, why so? Aye, so that way goes the game. Now I perceive that she hath made compare between our statures. She hath urged her height, and with her personage, her tall personage, uh, her height forsooth, she hath prevailed with him. And are you grown so high in his esteem because I am so dwarfish and so low? <clears throat> How low am I, thou painted maypole? Speak! How low am I? Well, I am not yet so low, but that my nails can reach unto thine eyes. I pray you, though you mock me, gentlemen, let her not hurt me. You may perhaps think because she is something lower than myself that I can match her. Lower, hark again! Good, <gasps> Hermia! Do not be so bitter with me. I evermore did love you, oh, Hermia. Why, get you gone. Who is, this, who is it that hinders you? A foolish heart that leave here I behind. Oh, with Lysander. With Demetrius. Yes. Be not afraid she'll not harm thee, Helena. No, sir, she shall not, though you take her part. Oh, when she's angry, she is keen and shrewd. She was a vixen when we went to school, and though she be but little, she is fierce. Oh, little again, nothing but low and little. Why will you suffer her to flout me thus? Get you gone, you minimus. <laughs> you are too officious in her behalf that scorns your services. Let her alone, and speak not of Helena. <laughs> you, mistress. All this coil is long of you. I will not trust you, I, nor longer stay in your cursed company. I am amazed and know not what to say.
search function, friends list, follow function. No need to go anywhere else. So make your next meeting the best meeting you can have. Hey, you're in the woods. Great. We're excited to officially introduce Clearview's new financial center to the Wilkins Township and Monroeville communities. Our office is conveniently located in the shops at Penn Center East and features an open and welcoming layout with the latest technologies, including our Clearview Live video teller machines, which offer extended hours of operation for the most common account transaction needs. Our financial center staff is eager to connect consumers and business owners with the deposit and loan solutions that best fit your needs and assist you on your journey to financial wellness. This is thy negligence. Still, thou mistook. Or else, I committed thy knaveries willfully. Believe me, King of Shadows, I mistook. Did not you tell me I should know the man by the Athenian garments he had on? And so far, blameless proves my enterprise that I have anointed an Athenian's eyes. And so far, I am glad it did so sort, as this there jangling I esteem a sport. Thou seest these lovers? Seek a place to fight. Hi there for Robin, overcast the night, and lead these testy rivals so astray as one comes not within the other's way. Like to Lysander, sometimes frame thy tongue and stir Demetrius up with bitter wrong. And sometime rile thou like Demetrius. And in this way, look thou, lead them thus, till o'er their brows, death counterfeiting sleep with leaden legs and batty wings do creep. Then crush this herb in Lysander's eye, whose liquor hath the virtuous property to take from thence all evil in its might and make his eyeballs roll with wanton sight. When next they wake, all this derision will seem a dream and fruitless vision. While I in this affair do thee employ, I'll to my queen. And then, I'll her charmed eye release from monster's view, and all this shall be peace. Up and down, up and down, I will leave them up and down. I am feared in field and town. Goblin, lead them up and down. Here comes one. Where art thou, proud Demetrius? Speak thou now! Here, villain, where art thou? I will be with thee straight. Follow me, then, to plainer ground. Lysander, speak again! Yea, art thou there? Follow my voice. We'll try no manhood here. Ugh. When I come where he calls, then he is gone! Oh, come thou gentle day. For if but once thou show me thy gray light, I'll find Demetrius. Ugh. And revenge this spite. <laughs> Nay, then thou mockest me. Thou shalt buy this dear, if ever I thy face by daylight see. Thou go thy way. Faint, faintness constraineth me to measure out my length on this cold bed. By day's approach, 
look to be visited. Oh, weary night. Oh, long and tedious night. Abate thy hour. Shine comforts from the east that I may back to Athens by daylight from these that my poor company detest. And sleep, which sometimes shuts up sorrow's eye, steal me a while from mine own company. Yet but three, come one more, two of both kinds make up four. Here she comes, cursed and sad. Cupid is a knavish lad, thus to make poor females mad. <sighs> never so weary, never so in woe, I can no further crawl, no further go. Here I will rest me till the break of day. Heavens, shield Lysander, if they mean a fray. On the ground, sleep sound, I'll apply to your eye, gentle lover, remedy. When thou wakest, thou takest true delight in the sight of thy former lady's eye. And the country proverb known, every man shall have his own. Jack shall have Jew, naught shall go ill, the man shall have his mare again, and all shall be well. Where's Peace Blossom? Ready. Scratch my head, Peace Blossom. Where's Monsieur Cobweb? Ready. Good Monsieur, get you your weapons and kill me a red-hipped humblebee on top of a thistle. And good Monsieur, bring me the honey bag. Don't fret yourself in the action. And good Monsieur, have a care, the honey bag break not. I would be loath to have you overflown with honey bags, senor. I must to a barber, monsieur. Or say, sweet love, what thou desirest to eat. But pray you, have none of your people stir me. I have an exposition of sleep come upon me. Sleep thou, and I will wind thee in my arms. Fairies, be gone, and be always away. Oh, how I love thee, how I dote on thee. <laughs> Welcome, good Robin. Seest thou this sweet sight? <laughs> Her dotage now I do begin to pity. I will undo this hateful imperfection of her eyes. And, good Robin, take this transformed scalp from off the head of this Athenian swain, that he awaking when the other does may all to Athens back again repair and think no more on this night's accidents than on the fierce vexation of a dream. But first, I will release the Fairy Queen. <sighs> be as thou wast wont to be. See as thou wast wont to see. Diane's bud or Cupid's flower hath this force and blessed power. Now, my Titania, wake you my sweet queen. My Oberon, what visions have I seen? Methought I was enamored of <laughs> an ass. There lies your love. How came these things to pass? Oh, how my eyes do loathe his visage now. <laughs> Silence a while. Robin, take off his head. Now when thou wakest with thine own fool's eyes peep. Fairy King, attend and mark. I do hear the morning lark. Then, my queen, in silence sad, trip we after the night's shade. We, the globe, can compass soon, swifter than the wandering moon. Oh, 
that sucked. What nymphs are these? My lord, this is my daughter here asleep. And this Lysander. Uh, this Demetrius is. This Helena? Old Nita's Helena? I wonder about them being here together. But speak, Aegeus, is not this the day when Hermia should give answer of a choice? <laughs> it is, my lord. Good morrow, friends. St. Valentine's is past. Begin these lovebirds but to couple now? Pardon, my lord. I pray you all stand up. <laughs> no, you two are rival enemies. How comes this gentle concord in the world that hatred is so far from jealousy to sleep by hate and fear no enmity? My lord, I shall reply amazedly, half asleep, half waking, but as yet I swear, I cannot truly say how I came here. But as I think, for truly I would speak, and now I do bethink me so it is, I came with Hermia hither. Enough, enough, my lord, you have enough. The law, the law upon his head. They would have stolen away. Uh, they would, Demetrius, thereby to have defeated you and me. You of your wife and me of my consent. Of my consent that she should be your wife. My lord, fair Helen told me of their stealth, of this their purpose hither to this wood. But my good lord, I wot not by what power, but by some power it is my love to Hermia, melted as the snow. It seems to me now as the remembrance of an idol god, which in childhood I did dote upon. And all the virtue and the faith of my heart, the object and the pleasure of mine eye is, is only Helena. To her, my lord, was I betrothed ere I saw Hermia. Fair lovers, you are fortunately met. Of this discourse we more will hear anon. Aegeus, I will overbear your will. For in the temple, by and by, with us, these couples shall eternally be knit. These things seem small and indistinguishable. <laughs> Methinks I see these things with parted eye when everything seems double. So methinks. And I have found Demetrius like a jewel, mine own and not mine own. Are you sure that we are awake? <laughs> <laughs> it, it seems to me that yet we sleep, we dream. Do not you think the Duke was here? Uh, yea, uh, and my father. When my cue comes calling, I will answer. My next is my fair pyramus. Damn! Oh. Peter Quince? Flute to Bellows Mander? Snuck a tinker, starveling. God's my life. Stolen hence and left me asleep. I have had a rare vision. I have had a dream. Pass the wit of man to say what dream it was. Man is but an ass if he goes about to expound this dream. Me thought I was. There is no man to say what. Me thought I was, and me thought I had. Man is but an ass if he will offer to say what me thought I had. The eyes of man hath not heard. The ears of man cannot see. Man's hands unable to taste. His mouth unable to conceive. Nor his heart able to report what my dream was. I will have Peter Quince write me a ballad of this dream. It shall be called Bottom's Dream. Because it hath no bottom. And I will sing it at the latter end of the play. Before the Duke. It's free adventure to make it more gracious. I shall sing it at her death. <laughs> Masters, the Duke is coming from the temple. And if our sport had gone forward, we had all been made men. 
Where are these lads? Bottom. Where are these hearts? Oh, most courageous day. Oh, most happy hour. <laughs> Masters, I am to discourse wonders, but ask me not what, for if I tell thee, I am no true Athenian. Ah, I will tell you everything as it fell out. <laughs> Let us hear, sweet bottom. Uh, not a word of me. All I will say is that the Duke hath dined. Get your apparel together. Good strings to your beards, new ribbons for your pumps. Meet presently at the palace. Every man look over his part. For the short and longest, our play is preferred. In any case, let Fisby have clean linen, and let not him that plays the lion pare his nails, for they shall hang out for the lion's claw. And most dear actors, Eat no onions nor garlic, for we are to utter sweet breath. And I do not doubt they will say, "'Tis a sweet comedy." No more words. Away. Go away. Oh. Gentles, perchance you wonder at this show, but wonder on till truth makes all things plain. This man is Pyramus, if you would know. This beauteous lady Thisbe is certain. This man with lime and rough cast doth present wall, that vile wall which did these lovers sunder. And through walls chink, poor souls, they are content to whisper. At the witch let no man wonder. This man, with lanthorn, dog, and bush of thorn, presenteth moonshine. For if you will know, by moonshine did these lovers think no scorn to meet at Ninus's tomb, and there, there to woo. This grisly beast, which lion hight by name, the trusty Thisbe, coming first by night, did scare away, or rather did affright. And as she fled, her mantle she did fall, which lion vile with bloody mouth did stain. Anon comes Pyramus, sweet youth and tall, and finds his trusty Thisbe's mantle slain, whereat with blade, with bloody blameful blade, he bravely broached his boiling bloody breast. <laughs> and Thisbe, Carrying in mulberry shade, his dagger drew and died. For all the rest, let lion, moonshine, wall, and lovers twain at large discourse while here they do remain. In this interlude, it doth befall that I, one snout by name, present a wall. And such a wall that I would have you think that had in it some cranny, nook, or chink. <laughs> Through which the lovers, Pyramus and Thisbe, did often whisper very secretly. This loam. This rough cast. And this stone doth show that I am that same wall. The truth is so. And this, the cranny, right and sinister, through which the faithful lovers are to whisper. It is the wittiest partition that ever I heard discourse, my lord. Here, Mr. Charles, near the wall, silence. Oh, grim looked knight, oh, knight with hue so black, oh, knight, which ever art when day is not, oh, knight, oh, knight, alack, alack, oh, alack, I fear my Thisbe's promise is forgot, and thou, Oh, wall, oh, sweet and lovely wall that stands between her father's ground and mine. 
thou wall, O oh, sweet and lovely wall, show me thine chink to blink through with mine eye. Thanks, courteous wall. Jove shield thee well for this. But what see I? No Thisbe do I see. Oh, wicked wall, through whom I see noblest. Cursed be thy stones for thus deceiving me. Paul who thinks being sensible should curse again. No, in truth, sir, deceiving me is Thisbe's cue. She is to enter now, and I am to spy her through the wall. You shall see, it'll all fall pat, just as I have told you. Yonder, here she comes. O oh, wall, full often hast thou heard my moans for parting my fair Pyramus and me. My cherry lips hast often kissed thy stones, thy stones with lime and hair knit up in thee. I see a voice. Now will I to the chink to spy, and I can hear my Fisby's face. Fisby! My love thou art, my love, I think. Oh, kiss me through the hole of this vile wall. Mm. Kiss the wall's hole, not thy lips at all. Wilt thou to Ninny's tomb straight away? Tide life, tide death, I come without delay. Thus have I wall, my part discharged so. And thus being done, thus away wall doth go. You ladies, whose gentle hearts do fear the smallest, monstrous mouse that creeps on floor, may now perchance both quake and tremble here when lion, rough in wildest rage, doth roar. Then know that I once snug the joiner am a lion fell, nor else no lion's dam. For if I should as lion come in strife into this place, twere pity on my life. This lantern doth the horned moon present. Myself he should have worn the horns on his head. This lantern doth the horned moon present. Myself the man in the moon do seem to be. This I is the, the greatest error of all the rest. The man should be put into the lantern. How is thus the man in the moon? I am aweary of this moon. What he would change? Proceed, moon. All I have to say is to tell you that the lantern is the moon. I, the man in the moon. This thorn bush, my thorn bush. This dog, my dog. This is old Minnie's tomb. Where is my love? <laughs> well roared lion. Well run, Thisbe. Well shown moon. Truly, the moon shines with a good grace. Well moused lion. So the lion vanished. Ah, and then came Pyramus. Sweet moon, I thank thee for thy sunny beams. I thank thee, moon, for shining now so bright. For by thy gracious golden glittering gleams, I trust to see true Thisbe's sight. But stay, O oh spite, but mark, poor knight, what dreadful dole is here. Eyes, do you see how can it be? O oh, dainty duck, O oh, dear, thy mantle good, what stained with blood? Approach ye furies, fill. O oh, fate, come, come, cut thread and thrum. Quill, crust, conclude, and quell. Oh, this passion and the death of a dear friend would go near to make a man look sad. Sure, my heart, but I pity the man. Oh, wherefore, nature, didst thou lie in frame? Since lion vile here hath devoured, my dear. Devoured! Devoured! Which is... No. Which was the fairest dame that lived, that liked, that looked, that loved with cheer. Come, tears confound, out sword, out sword and wound the pap of Pyramus. I be left hap where the heart doth hop. Thus 
Nein, nein. Was? Was? Now I am dead. Now I am fled. My soul is in the sky. Moon, lose thy light. Tongue, take thy flight. Now die. 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 Uh, how chance Moonshine is gone before Thisbe comes back and finds her lover? She'll find him by starlight. Here she comes, and her passion ends the play. Asleep, my love? <laughs> what, dead, my dove? Oh, Pyramus. <laughs> Arise. Speak. Speak. Quite dumb. Dead. Dead. A tomb must cover thy sweet eyes. For these, my lips are gone. Gone! gone! Oh, sisters three! Come, come to me! With hands as pale as milk, steep them in gore. Since you have shore with shears, his thread of silk. <laughs> Tongue, not a word. Come, trusty sword. Come, blade. My breast in brew. Farewell, friends. Thus, this be ends. Uh, adieu. Adieu! Adieu. Moonshine Lion are left to bury the dead. I and Wall, too. No, I assure you. The wall that parted their fathers is down. Will it please you to see the epilogue? No epilogue, I pray. For your play needs no excuse. <gasps> excuse for when the players are all dead, there leaves no one to be blamed. And so it is, and, and, and uh, very notably discharged. Leave your epilogue alone. Oh, the turn to midnight hath told 12 lovers to bed. Tis almost fairy time. <laughs> If we shadows have offended, think but this, and all is mended, that you have but slumbered here while these visions did appear, and this weak and idle theme no more yielding but a dream. Gentles, do not reprehend. If you pardon, we will mend. And as I am an honest puck, if we have unearned luck now to scape the serpent's tongue, we will make amends ere long. Else the puck a liar call. And so, good night unto you all. Give us your hands, if we be friends, and Robin shall restore amends.
At Clearview, we believe in neighbors helping neighbors. Our outreach initiative, Clearview Cares, is everything we do to support the communities we serve, including thousands of volunteers.